ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my playthrough of Fallout 3. I decided to uh, play Fallout 3 because of the uh, near imminent release uh, in a couple months of Fallout 4, and I figured that a lot of people uh, who maybe want to revisit this game without having to stop what they were doing and play through, or uh, perhaps have yet to ever play Fallout 3, needed to kind of see what the Fallout games were all about, and personally, for me, this is the best of the Fallout games. I have all the Fallout games, including Fallout Shelter, and we probably will be doing a video on Fallout Shelter, as I mentioned in my channel trailer. But uh, the thing that really uh, stuck with me in Fallout 3 is just how how much I felt connected to the, the world that the game takes place in. Uh, unlike, say, Fallout New Vegas, where everything was so factionalized that I couldn't really get emotionally involved in it, Fallout 3 is a much more personal story and um, although it doesn't have some really awesome features that exist in Fallout New Vegas, uh, Fallout New Vegas did come later and is slightly prettier of a game, but Fallout 3, uh, unless you're running mods, definitely looks its age. However, uh, it just, uh, to me, it just kind of all falls away when just uh, roaming the wastelands, doing quests, and just exploring and having fun. And I still find new content every single time I play through the game, and I've played through the game maybe as many as 10 times uh, since I first uh, got it in 2010. The game was originally released in 2008, I should note. Uh, also, I should note that the game has a lot of uh, licensed music. Now, Bethesda does say that you are fully free to uh, stream the game or uh, do playthroughs of the game on uh, platforms like YouTube, and as long as you're following YouTube's uh, restrictions on content and whatnot, uh, you should be fine. However, that doesn't stop YouTube's bot system from going through and flagging videos that may have copyrighted music on it. And so we won't be listening to Galaxy News Radio, and I will be, I will be muting the, uh, uh, the intro music. Uh, I will probably replace the intro music with uh, regular Fallout 3 music, uh, just so that uh, it all kind of works and blends together, and I'll probably be talking over it as well. So... Um, Without further ado, let's go ahead and play some Fallout 3. changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world, but war, war never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves.
<clears throat> so, uh, let's see. Hopefully my microphone and stuff sounds okay, because uh, this is the last time I'm going to try to record this. This is the uh, the kind of beginning character setup part of the game. Unfortunately, it's a playable character setup thing, so it's not like you just go set everything up real quick, like in the first Fallout, and uh, be on your merry way. But uh, I, did, I do want to say that I'm just going to do this part all as one episode, so that if you want to skip this episode and go right to the next episode... Where we, where we will pick up the story proper, feel free, because uh, I've played the beginning of this game so many times in the last uh, couple weeks, because you know, I'm trying to get everything ready for the channel, and uh, uh, I wanted to do a lot of practice, and I wanted to get my mic settings and stuff as good as I can, and they are what they are right now. My microphone isn't the best, and nor is my voice for recording. I don't have the deep radio voice. And I can't do that sound for very long because my voice will start to crack. So, uh, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, rush through this as quickly as possible. It's a boy. Um, unfortunately, it can't skip boy. the dialogue son, and whatnot. Beautiful, um, healthy baby boy. Now, when you're first playing the game, you know, for the very first time, oh, this is a good part of the game. We did it. Uh, I don't want to, like, son. sound like I'm knocking on it too hard because I'm really not. It's just... Um, got a bright this part of the game is what it is. It sure. doesn't really affect the long-term aspects of the game all that much. Hi there. I'm your daddy, little guy. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... <clears throat> That's a good name, don't you think? I'm also eating my lunch. Looks like they're finished during this part the because uh, Let's see what you look like when you're old I need carbs or I'll fall asleep. Uh, normally, I set up some stuff, uh, a lot of stuff on this guy. I, I like to say I, I like to take the wimp at him because he's not the most uh, manly man looking dude here. But uh, let's just go hairstyle. Uh, I always go, what was it, blast back and uh, hair color. I just make a little bit lighter. Uh, a little bit redder uh, just to more closely match my own maybe take a little bit of the blue out so it's not quite so gray uh, and that's all I do for that uh, facial hair the Gettysburg bam uh, let me just go face uh, customize real quick tone just uh, kind of beard that up and uh, mustache that up maybe uh Darken the eye sockets just a little bit because I'm someone who hasn't gotten a lot of sleep in the last oh five or six years, and um, otherwise happy with that. Okay, so that's good. So not quite as a uh, heroic as my uh, regular characters are, except for the of course the hair and the uh, the goatee. Are you sure you want this character to be yours? Okay. Yes, I do. Otherwise, we spend too much time on it. We never look at the character after this. Moment anyway, because oh, I play in first person. Very strapping. <laughs> she says that, but yeah, of course she's mom, and all sorts of that's just creepy. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? You're just James? A... Catherine. James. Catherine. She's in cardiac James. arrest. Start compressions. James. Get the baby out of here. Move, move. She could just say, "Oh, he's very James. handsome." That's what mom says. Come She's on. like strapping, like, on, might push you aside for our kid. That's just weird. Okay. That is just weird. We need a doctor, not a dead Fail to meet my expectations, and there would be. Look straight into the light. James and his cheery chatter. All right. Just like her. Come on over here. So it's time to put baby in a corner. Walk to daddy. There you go. That was just like, this is how you walk around. Walking like a pro. I get it if you like it's the first time you've ever so played a game. Now. Listen, kid. But uh I know you don't like it when daddy leaves you alone. But I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, pal. I'll be back. And they go lock your controls while this is happening. Now I'm free. And of course you're supposed to break out. You're supposed to find your special book, which is 
strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. And so just a quick rundown. Strength is uh, basically how, how much you can carry and how much you do, uh, how much damage you do with melee weapons, essentially. Perception, it's like how good you find things. Uh, basically, uh, your compass, uh, whenever an enemy is near, has a little red mark on it to show you where they are. Uh, the more perception you have, the further out you can detect people. It's not that big of a deal if you're scouting around with your eyeballs. Typically, I always spot the bad guys before uh, they show up on my thing, so... Um, yeah, endurance is how long I can play, and blah, blah, blah. And I think it's like how much health you have, etc. Uh, charisma is just, you know, how much people like you. Intelligence is how good you are. Things like uh, computers and repair and that kind of stuff. Agility is how good your aim is and whatnot. Uh, luck, they say, is, is how how good, how many good things happen to you. So basically anytime there's like a chance roll. Excuse me. Um, in like a... a a dialogue option. Uh, luck just improves your chances of winning uh, that roll. By and large, it doesn't really affect us that much. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour this uh, seven into strength, seven into intelligence, and uh, lately I've been going more with charisma. It seems to work. Um, maybe in previous things I do agility or endurance uh, but uh, um, but I've been doing charisma um, just so people like me just that much more because I have to put points into a book for people to like me apparently that was a joke you guys don't see my, my facial expressions unfortunately when I'm doing this I don't have a webcam right now so, uh, <laughs> you are quite a little I probably won't, uh, also don't have like a, a good recording place. We're basically just in, uh, want to show you an office I set up See that? that has a couch in it passage. with uh, my computer Bible. desk. Revelation 21 He's talking about this and basically Alpha just Omega. remember this number. It's important Omega. later. You'll know it when you see it. I will give unto him the uh, and still fountain of the water of life. They'll hint that. Every so often throughout the game. All right, come on. Let's go. See uh, it's just an important more. little thing that you're supposed to remember um, at the very end. I don't want to spoil it, but if it wasn't obvious, generally most games don't start throwing religious dogma at you unless there's a reason. Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Can you believe it? He is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, pal. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. If only you're Congratulations, mother. young man. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn ten, well, you're ready to take on your first official vault responsibilities. So here you are. As Overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You will be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only ten once. That's always the boss that no one ever likes. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. Your boss is snarky about uh, all the bad things and horrible things he can have you do. You know he's going to be a bad boss. It's like, I could make you mop, you know, the bathroom floor after someone had a horrible accident. Even though you were hired as an animator. I could do that. Never really happened to me that way, but I once had a boss that during uh, the setup for... Uh, this big anniversary party was going to have me watch everyone's kids. And I was like, nope. Not doing that. And I didn't do it. And they were really mad at me because I told them I didn't like kids. Which is mostly true. 
Uh, yeah, great party, Amada. Uh -oh. But really, your dad did most of it. I just help with the decorations and stuff. Because hey, you're five. I you can't guess what I got you for your birthday. Well, she's supposed to be like Go 10. on, guess. Probably nine at this point. Uh, I really have no idea. Ha. I knew I surprised you. Who's your favorite barbarian? That's right, Grognak. Well, I wasn't going to say Grognak. And with no missing pages. Missing pages, because I'm sassy. Things. Believe it or not, imagine him reading comic books. I guess everybody was ten once. Well, I better let you get back to mingling with your guests. We'll talk later, okay? Happy birthday. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't talk like that when I was 10. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. What, are you two best friends now? Hey, Wally, I think Paul's gone to no. Part of this also kind of highlights the trouble the vault is in. You notice there are four male kids and one female kid in the entire vault. These are all the friends that you have. These, these, this is not everyone who's in the vault, but there just aren't any young kids in the same kind of age group. Having a good time? It wasn't easy keeping this a secret. How do you like that Pip Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? As cool, a did you fact, fix it up for me? I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A-series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. Thanks, Stanley. <laughs> oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday. Not much, but I hope you like it. Now go on. I'm sure so, everyone else would like you know, you got some really old the... people. Come on, Wally. You always have good ideas. And a bunch of dudes. Yeah. And there's like a, like a couple other women in the entire vault, and that's it. Uh, so, how's it going, pal? Talk to him. Oh yeah, I gotta talk to her. Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My my my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Fortunately, this part of the game is gated, so you can't just. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Basically, this part is just telling you to. Uh, showing you how to interact with people, you know, talking about, you know, the uh, different uh, dialogue options you'll get. Um, you can be really polite or you could be kind of, uh, uh, though to me, this is the more polite response because when someone says, you just want your gift and you say yes, to me, that's rude. So my, my typical response is, and of course, this is part of the way I was raised is if if you have to ask for something the answer is no so generally things are offered um out of the kindness of your heart or uh basically it was just a way to keep us from being annoying in grocery stores so you know occasionally we you know we'd get you know like a little bit of candy or gum or something like that uh, you know a little, little treat or whatever that you know are just all over the place in grocery stores. But if we asked for it, the answer was always no. And so I was kind of raised with, you know, with that mentality. You know, it's one thing. It's like, oh, I broke my leg. Can you help me? No, no, it wasn't like that. But uh, not that I ever broke my leg. But uh, so when you say yes to someone saying you want your present, um, not that question would never be asked to me uh, in the beginning. Uh, but, uh, the answer was like, oh, no, 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 you don't have to get me anything. That's great. That's cool. You know, I don't mind. You know, we don't really make a big deal out of birthdays in my family anyway. Um, you anyway, we always had cake and parties when I was a kid, but, um, you know, as an adult, I don't expect people to get me anything. And I'm always kind of uncomfortable when people do get me stuff. Um, but, uh, so... Let's just go ahead because that's a nice, polite young man you are. She gets the and most positive res uh, response when you give the top one. Top one is usually the most positive, but not always. You always need to read them. Here you go. A nice, sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday boy. No sharing required today. Time. Life is not all. Where are you um, I'm hungry. And that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. So naturally, this kid's full of charm. 
I probably would just oh, share it. If the cake it. was destroyed, I probably Five. would. Give me that sweet roll, I'm gonna pound you. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. Okay. You're gonna be sorry, you little... Of course, you can't fight back, which is annoying. You should try it sometime, Butch. Daddy. What's Butch's problem, anyway? I can't believe he tried to start a fight at your own birthday party. What a jerk. That could be the really mean response. Uh, I could do the jerk try to steal my sweet roll. I could do, it's my, it's my fault. I'm just a big target, and I don't stick up for myself. Or I could go the kind of tattletale route. I've never done that, actually. But uh, I'll just go with a strong response. Right. That's exactly what I was thinking. What you and she gets the sarcastic <laughs> response. <laughs> you all right, son? How smart you are, Wally. I hope Butch didn't hurt you. You want to tell me what that was all about? Uh, it was nothing. Just boys trying to be boys. That's fine, son. I'm glad to see you're not letting Butch bully you. He's going to be a handful in a few years if his mother doesn't take him in hand. Well, no harm done. By that, he means Why beating get back the kids to enjoying his party. What should we call ourselves? Here's one. Wally and the Big so Cheese. Stanley. All right. I know you were busy with the Big the wire Cheese. Enjoying yourself? Nice try. I should be the Big Cheese. Oh, sure. Hey, don't worry about me. Got away with not talking to the overseer. Thanks. I'll send him right down. Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. You can fix anything, right? Anyway, I'm glad you can make it. Happy birthday, dearie. My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. Yeah, my dad and Amada threw me a great party, didn't they? They sure did. Not that did. she would know, she hasn't my, been in it. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Helping my dad, Since quote unquote. Was such a special occasion. Do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem just for you. <clears throat> I hope well, you like it. Well, it's the thought that counts. Thank you, I'll treasure it always. Is that all? Of course. It's all you gave me. Run along now, dearie, and have yourself a wonderful birthday. All right. So, the reactor's down here, and of course, Dad is slow, and of course, we're on auto run. We run all the time. You can turn it off by uh, doing that, but then we just walk so slowly. So, back on. What are you doing down here, young man? Hmm? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. Young man? I'm not a kid, I'm ten years old. <laughs> you sure are. Pip boy and everything. Look at that. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. I said about slow. Painfully slow. Are you ready for your surprise? What kind of surprise? The overseer gave you your pit boy, and you're old enough to do some work. So, I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, my give it a dad try? steals knives from children. Here, we can't shoot a gun here. We sure can't, unless we want the overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. BB gun, hmm. so they make virtually no uh, reverberating noise whatsoever. I have shotguns before. It's not, like, something that... I think it's the best thing in the world, but people should at least uh, Careful. It's a rad road. know how. Think you can take care of that with your BB gun? This is America, after all, and uh, chances are uh, at some point in your life you'll encounter a gun in some way, somehow. And uh, good at work. least knowing how to put, make sure the safety's on, that there's no round in the Let's chamber, I think together. is a good thing. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, Even if it's just like... Of me with a big game hunter. You know, you're, you're, you're babysitting for someone and they pull out, you know, their parent's gun or something and you need to 
you know, get the gun away from the kid make, and make sure that it's not uh, dangerous or something. You never know. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you are perfectly So we're uh, rapidly entering the so final part of the episode. Go to class to take your goat exam. Go on now. You've got a goat to take. If you say so, Dad. Bye, Dad. Take care, son. I got out of here. And good luck. We want that. I can't remember if you pick it up. You can pick it up later or not. So, good morning. Make sure that you get it. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? I'm a little worried. <laughs> I hope Jonas can take a look at me soon. I can show you the real okay. Morning, Jonas. God, Butch. Morning, Why don't you just leave me alone? What are you gonna do? Yeah. What do you want? What's going on here? None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? Speech 58%. If you keep messing with her, the overseer is going to come down on your gang. Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. Daddy's come girl, on, Daddy's girl. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Whatever you say, Butch. You're the boss. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust goat, me. Goat. It really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Oh, sure. I'll ace I'm sure it. You I'm awesome. Especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. Tunnel snakes rule. Fine. Let's go. Go waiting for take a seat so we can the start. last person to come in because they're an AI they walk really slow well now that everyone has managed to find the classroom we can finally get started no talking and keep your eyes to yourselves <laughs> yes I'm talking to you Mr. Deloria sure thing Mr. Brunch unless anyone else has an insightful comment let's get started question one a frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? But doctor, wouldn't that cause destabilization of the fission singularity, which that's uh, not proper science because there's no singularity with uh, fission. With gravity, not with fission. Could be wrong. But pretty sure a singularity is a black hole, not, uh, say, a uh, fission reaction, which is a chain reaction. Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic... Can be a chain reaction. With a fission is basically splitting atoms, so it doesn't cause a singularity. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? Amputate the foot before the uh, infection spreads. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Give the boy a hug and tell him everything will be okay. Because the overseer, which is... Um, the other option, probably the more responsible option, the overseer is a jerk in this vault. And so turning him into the overseer would be a town amount to getting him beaten half to death. Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Uh, always the pitcher, never the catcher. Uh, designated hitter. I'll go with the soccer team. Question five. I used to play your soccer. Grandmother I like you soccer. Tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Uh, order your most, or uh, offer your most prized possession in exchange Mr. for the person's life. He's locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. 
How do you proceed? <laughs> Use a bobby pin. Lock picking is a big important skill in this game. Oh no. You've been exposed to radiation and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? Large dose of anti-mutagen agent. Question eight. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book. Issue number one. Number one. You want it. What's the best you way You want to it. My precious. Yep. Trade one of, for your most blah, 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 valuable possessions. Nine. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. <clears throat> you enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... Loosen the bolts on some pipes. When the sink is turned on, the restroom will flood. Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. I really just want to do a write-in and say me. Pencils down, people. That's it. Infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray as the situation warrants. All right, so this is going to be the tail end of uh, our they episode. Say the goat never lies. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. It has always given me that answer. I suspect if I just did all the cruel answers, it would say something else. But um, if you go with this, uh, uh, this is the one I always go with. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what uh, um, this one or that one. But I always go with the middle one on this one. Ah, closer to reality. But it gives you the option to change your Listen, skills. I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously, and look where I ended up. Just Stuck in a vault. You and me. The whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. So, these really aren't bad. Not really into melee weapons in this game. But we need repair. And we need explosives. Those are the two first things we need. Uh, Lockpick is very important in this game. Science is very important in this game. And uh, repair is very important in this game. Everything else, largely based on how you want to play. So if you want to sneak past everyone, you don't really need guns. There's really only one quest where sneak is like necessary. Um, however, uh, it's a short one and you can literally just, uh, bull your way through it and you're not supposed to fire your gun during that quest anyway. So just running through is generally, uh, the best bet. Uh, so I go with speech early on. It might get us some extra caps in the beginning. Typically, I'd go right for lockpick or something else, but we need explosives, we need repair, and perhaps speech will work. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, as soon as I leave this room, the uh, beginning Back part off. of this uh, <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Bratch. I hope I uh, of this part, you know, the uh, character creation part of the game will be over, and the story proper will pick up. So uh, I'm going to cut the episode off here. I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, please do me a huge favor and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, lots of uh, interesting content, not just game playthroughs, uh, will be coming. So uh, I'm planning on doing a, a small game and making uh, doing all making videos on all the behind the scenes of how the thing goes together. Um, and so. 
that should be fun. Uh, I want to do a radio play. Uh, right now, the biggest hindrance to that is actually uh, getting decent recording equipment and finding a good place to record. So I have a bit of research to do before I can really commit to that. Uh, I was going to build a uh, studio in my garage, but I just don't have enough uh, sheetrock or uh, plywood to uh, make decent walls with. Uh, we have all the 2 by 4s to do the structure, we just don't have any way of sealing it off yet. So um, that may have to wait until uh, uh, I should be getting a freelance gig in the next few weeks. So hopefully that comes in. And I'm able to uh, move forward with that, but uh, depending on how much I actually make on that, because it's I generally charge by a day rate. So if it's just like oh, a couple days, then it's like eh, well, I I need to pay rent. <laughs> so, um, but if I'm able to do a week, you know, I might have some extra cash that um, I'll be able to. Uh, to do that and then of course uh, getting the microphones which is expensive but uh, I do want to thank everyone for watching again and uh, we'll see you next episode when we continue our playthrough of Fallout 3 thanks for watching guys bye